Right, welcome to uh, another podcast interview. Uh, this time I'm with uh, Johnny Tristram. Um, do you want to explain a bit about sort of where you're from and, and you know, musically what you've been doing? Yeah, uh, hometown of Northwich, Cheshire. Um, I, uh, I left there when I was in my 20s. Um, as an actor at that time, I wasn't a singer. And I moved to London and uh, it began for me as a chance audition for a boy band. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got picked out of 20,000 people to be in a, a new boy band back in the 90s. Uh, okay. uh, and and it was, it, this was the beginning of my musical career. Um, I lasted about a year and a half with the group going through all the sort of process of being turned into a product. It was quite interesting to go through. And, and then about six months before they signed with Sony Records, the management decided that I uh, 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 I didn't quite cut the bill, as he called it, and, and decided to mm. cut the group to four, not five. And uh, <laughs> they got quite famous. I, okay. I decided I didn't want to go home and be the guy that was in that band, so I kept traveling at that point. Right. And did, a few, right. did a few years on the road, just uh, staying away from it all. And then came back to the UK and sort of vowed that I was going to do all I could to become a musician one day and prove him wrong, really. And for a long time, I sort of carried that on my shoulder without really understanding what it was. Right. I went through a, a few other pop bands and a few other groups on my travels. And then I started doing the working men's club scene in the Northwest. Um, and uh, I worked in pubs, clubs and traveled around uh, uh, mainly with Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays for an agent in Wigan. Um, started singing then. I wouldn't say I was much of a singer. I was probably quite a standard club singer back then. And Okay. Uh, I had a standard 45 minute set of songs, but uh, it was it was good fun for a little while. And then I, and then I decided to start traveling a little bit. And my auntie, who uh, lived out in Texas, Houston, she was a big Dallas fan as a kid. And she used to watch the, the show and say, one day I want to be in America. And she did that. And she moved out there and ended up being a centerfold for Playboy magazine. Whoa, and, <laughs> and, uh, and she's got a crazy, crazy long backstory. But she, she she took me over there and said, hey, come and see what this life's like. See if you like it and see if I can introduce you to some people. Well, while I was over there in Texas, I, I enjoyed it I, uh, for, for a little while aesthetically. <laughs> yes, yeah. we can say. Um, but, but it was a little bit of a challenge. I've always... Uh, been quite a moral person uh, and, 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 and that world was a little bit difficult to test your morals. So uh, I, I moved away and, and when I moved away from her while I was over in Texas, I ended up living in a house full of musicians who were in seven different bands. One was a Steely Dan tribute band, one was a Beatles tribute, another one was a, uh, a, a, a mixed rock covers band. And they all used to go off and play their shows at night and then come home and we jam together. I, I started to play the guitar, I picked it up and thought I'm right. going to teach myself self to play. Uh, I wasn't much of a player then, but, but um, Texas was really good for open mics. So I used to go regularly and, 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 and watch what everybody else did and see all these different flavors. Right. And then at that, that time, I felt no pressure to do anything. I was enjoying my time in music and enjoying my time in Texas. So I started to write. Um, and just write for me for, for the reason of it being therapy, really, uh, to get me through, uh, you know, where I'd been and what I'd gone through and what I wanted right. to do next, really, and find myself. Um, and I was quite lucky in the fact that the place that I lived was just below uh, a local bar and I was sat on my veranda playing my guitar and this group of some mid 20 year old kids who just started going to bars, heard me play and came over and said, hey, who's this English guy? What's he doing? And all of a sudden there was a little bit of a buzz around me writing and I was getting feedback from people on my songs that they could relate to what I was singing and that it helped them. And I was like, oh, this is good. I like this, you know, it's not just for me, it's for other people. And it's it's suddenly a tool that I can use in that sense. Right. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so that, that, that journey began there really with the writing and my first couple of songs uh, I wrote while I was out in Texas. Um, and okay. since then, I've had about another 15 years on the road, traveling, playing shows in Europe, um, Norway, Spain, Portugal, and the Netherlands. Most recently, I, I worked on the cruise ships. Okay. Uh, I, I did the ferries first from Amsterdam to uh, to N Newcastle. That was just that was <laughs> that was fun, and that was like a six nights, seven nights a week. Sorry, five hours a night, singing mm -hmm. and playing, which was real hard on the vocals, but it strengthened them and it strengthened my guitar playing. Uh, and then the cruise ship things happened and I actually was on my final cruise 
this uh, January, I'd gone out to go and sing for the firefighters of Australia who'd been fighting the, the bushfires. And Royal Caribbean had a ship that had uh, been turned away from Asia because of the pandemic right. and said, what, would, what could we do with this ship? We'll take it to America, to Australia and give these guys free cruises. So they flew me out. We had four fantastic cruises with the firefighters, met some great new friends and awesome stories from those guys. And then they, they locked down and they wouldn't let us in. And I got, I got caught on the ships for nine weeks. Ooh, severe. It was, it was pretty crazy, pretty nuts, and a, and a test of the challenge. And right when the pandemic was starting and nobody knew what was going on and restricted to just these two different American news channels with contrasting opinions, it was yes. cra crazy, crazy. But um, just before then, I'd moved to Port Levin. I'd met a guy in Portugal um, on my travels who said, I, I like what you're doing. He was from uh, Yorkshire himself. And he said, uh, come come and check out uh, come and check out Paul Flevin and Cornwall because there's a great music scene. And I looked it up and thought, oh, wow, it looks amazing there. And it seems coastally, I think in England, there's a different vibe with music than there is everywhere else. I, I, I found most of the UK very similar to my working men's club days where your pubs and clubs have just got a guy in the corner doing 45 minutes to a CD dressed like meatloaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and and that any real art never got paid for in the UK. So my, my, my traveling wasn't really out of necessity of not wanting to come back to England when I had a product. It was just the fact that there wasn't a scene for it as I could find. So this this introduction to Cornwall was great. And my plan was for this summer, the, just before this year, to come back from the cruise ship and do a whole summer of gigs. I'd, I'd got all 450 something venues mapped out across Devon and Cornwall. I'd got wow. the emails. I'd got the phone numbers. I just I, I, and I, the intention was do a year of cover gigs, build a, you know where I played some original stuff, build build a core of of income with that, and then start working on the product of my originals and getting that out there. Mm, brilliant. And of course, of course, the pandemic happened. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll talk a little bit uh, in a minute about your uh, you know. Uh, what happened musically to you during this lockdown, how you, well, you know, how it developed, but you've agreed to play live, well, live on this recording for us. Um, do you want to do the first track and introduce it like? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mentioned that, that Houston was the place that inspired me to be me, and I kind of take it as being a bit like my mecca. Um, because it's the place that show me what music could be done and used for to make people connect and make people happier. So I, I wrote a song about getting back to Houston after doing a, a, a stint of working in a pub over Christmas in England and then traveling via Spain and Portugal. I, I managed to save up the funds and then I wrote this track and headed back. So this became the title track for my first album and it's called Houston. I hope you like it. I'm going to just switch the earphones over. Yeah, to no worries, man. <laughs> Place to lay my head since I was in 
It's a different kind of crazy, but nothing's changed. Now I don't let that bother me, cause my mind's fine. And I'm just here to put my pen to And I'm sure. Much. Yeah, lovely, mate. Lovely. Great lyrics. Cheers. Great lyrics. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I think with uh, obviously with Zoom, it's you know, um, you get this sort of it's not the true sound. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you take it takes things away, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, it does. But um your voice comes through, it's it's great, really good, really, really good. Thank you. So the, the what the guitar wasn't coming through at all. Uh, no, it was coming through, but it does that thing where it's sort of uh, a little bit of fade, back. a little bit of fade, a little bit in, a little bit, you know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not too horrendous. I've I've heard it way worse. So, <laughs> but that's we pro the price we pay, really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we got to learn and, and educate and find new ways, isn't it? And switch. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, 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 that's the times. Did you find yourself during then? You obviously like say how many weeks on board that boat? Nine weeks. Uh, Nine, nine weeks, yeah, nine, nine weeks, weeks. And, and and three three of those weeks locked in cabins as well, and and and, oh. and, uh, and, and a lot of the time in a cabin with no windows, um, the door being banged on on a daily basis for about five different reasons, um, yeah. different times to wake you up with temperature checks and the, yeah. the food, uh, limited food delivery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was bizarre. Did you? So did you? I mean. You know, did you manage to write anything or was it just me? Yes, well, yeah. I, at first it was an absolute challenge, but what I did initially was I engaged in just sticking the phone on and live streaming because the one thing we had was some internet and from the cabin, uh, I got hold of a speaker off one of the, 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 the PA guys there and, and I set up in my room. So I was live streaming just to my mates back home because I knew everyone was going through the nutty you know, of what's going on. And I thought I just gonna keep singing and trying to make people smile. So yeah. I'd had a song written called Smile that became a bit of an anthem and people were connecting to. And uh, and then and then uh, I did one show when it was somebody else's platform that had just erupted. They were one of the early ones to get on there and I got something like a hundred thousand views and it went crazy. So 
the final thing that happened then was a Granada reports got hold of the story and they started to cover it. So I did a thing for a while and kept myself busy by doing the interviews with them. Once that had all happened and then I realized I'm still not getting home and it's going nowhere and, and there was no pressure to be anything, to do anything. I knew the income was stopped, it didn't matter. Uh, I just decided, you know what, I am going to write. And I sat down, I finished one song that was half done for about five years and I'd not finished called Keep On Keeping On. And then this song in one evening came to me uh, called The Truth. Uh, I'll play it for you in a little while. And uh, it was just an overpowering, like a message that had to come through. Wow. Um, yeah. And, and I, I, I had a conversation with somebody the night before and I mentioned a line that became the hook for the song. And then the whole thing within two hours was a finished track and the first finished song completely that had come out of me in a, in a good two or three years because I've been so busy trying to earn money and survive. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, you said you've been around the sort of music industry in, in a sense for quite a while now, haven't you? You know, yeah, inside and out in different ways, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so like, you know, what what bit of advice would you sort of give to someone that's you know starting out on that that line? How I would absolutely say that for me, the biggest issue with music and with the arts. Uh, over the years um, is the fact that it's always been seen as not a real job uh, and a, a lottery ticket. If you win the lottery, you get in the mainstream, you're on the telly, you're famous. If you don't, it's just a hobby and when you're going to get a real job. Yeah. Um, and that's been a massive problem. And, and there's been, you've been, we've been taught that in schools. I mean, music was a DOS. It wasn't a real subject, was it? People went and put, turned the Casio keyboard on and played with it, the yeah. demo button for about an hour. That's what happened at school when I was there. So, it was never taken seriously enough for me. And I think what I would suggest to anybody, I think it's going to happen. And I think it's already happening that it's becoming something now that creative is seen as a job role and the path to do it and the learning path to do it is going to become a lot more clearer for people in the nowadays world. I do think kids that are coming into this now have got a head start as regards to getting right. out to people because they know how to do it already. It's become second yeah. nature to them. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think, I think the one thing that I'd learned from, from it all is, is, uh, is be a business. Don't look for anybody else to give you that foot up because there's always a price tag for that. And generally that price tag is that they're not passionate enough to get it done and drive it through. You will be, and you'll carry it forward. And don't be afraid to fail. Keep doing mm -hmm. things until you learn lessons and keep moving forward. Music's not about being famous. Music's about connecting people and it's about, it's about sharing messages and lessons and, and, and good things, I believe. And, and sometimes sharing the hard things. But I, I really try and take negatives and turn them to positives. I believe that's my job and my role. Once I realized I could, I could do that, it became like, that was my gift. That, yeah. It's better yeah. than a paycheck. Uh, don't expect to be paid. I tell any musician, <laughs> don't, don't, if you want to do it the way you want to do it, don't expect to be paid. Take the gigs in the pubs, take the gigs everywhere else, but don't go in there thinking that's your show. Because it fantastic. isn't. You're work, Absolutely you're working fantastic. working for somebody else now. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely superb. Do you want to uh, play us another track then? Yeah, I'll do you the one that I, I did on the, on the ship uh, called The Truth uh, that okay. I wrote. I, I'll sing you that one. Bear with me two seconds. Yeah, yeah. seconds I was I wasn't right. <laughs> oh, I'm like Please be careful what you wish for if you talk to me today. 
Come make no guarantees that you like these things I say. It doesn't mean I don't love you or that this can't set you free. But if you don't want the truth, don't come to me. Oh, if you don't want the truth, don't come to me. So much beauty to be seen when you believe. And we must hurt, that's how we grow. Don't be scared, it's hard, I know. If you don't want the truth, don't come to me. I don't say these things to hurt you. I don't mean to cause you pain. I only want the best for you. We must lose sometimes the game. Oh, you've got to face them demons to be all that you could be. But if you don't want the truth, don't come to me. And if you don't want the truth, don't come to me. So much beauty to be seen when you believe. We must hurt, that's how we grow. But we scared as hard and If you don't want the truth, don't come to me. Now's the time to come together, one white world in harmony. You are my sisters and my brothers, we're just one big family. Let nothing come between us, let's be united finally. Be you ready now for the truth, so come with me. And I see you as you are for all them strengths, all them scars. I understand this life can bring you down But you got to choose to live Got so much love to give I have faith you'll get it right This time around Brilliant, mate. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Again, lyrically fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. Literally two hours that one, start to finish, just just fell out of me, and it was like it was a message that just that's, that somebody needed to hear that I had to yeah, write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, have you got any um, any sort of videos on YouTube or any stuff on YouTube at all? So, yeah, let me just uh, pull that off. Um, if you go to YouTube.com, Johnny Tristram, and SoundCloud, and um, also my johnnytristram.com itself, there's, there's there's lots of videos on the on the actual website, johnnytristram.com. I've got covers and originals on there okay um, so, just well, because if you give me give me two and i'll i'll put uh you know links on to this in the different section so magic magic what, which ones would you like me to seek out um i'd recommend well at the moment i've been really working hard to get everything together my plan is over the next year is to turn me into the business completely and, and have everything ready to come out together i right. kind of leak things as i've gone that's been more for the people that have kind of followed along the way um i, I did have the album out on uh on all digital platforms houston originally but i pulled that back because i just didn't feel it was getting it's worth in the way yeah, it's yeah. set up to do at the moment. So um, you can see things on there at the moment. There's some clips of the new stuff that's going to be coming out on SoundCloud. So check out SoundCloud and check out johnnytristram.com. Okay. They're the two that I say. And and I, I've got this new album of 11 tracks coming out very soon. Uh, and I'm going to be launching a year of Patreon where I'm going to be doing live broadcasts twice a week, sharing my new material. Um, that's, that's, that's the plan for the upcoming year now to, uh, and Fantastic. use the year to save up to convert my camper van that I've bought into a traveling show for when things are back to normal to take things on the road Superb. across Cornwall Superb. and the UK. That's yeah. the plan. You've actually, you, you've just answered the question I was going to ask, which was, you know, um, how do you see yourself and the music developing after lockdown and into the future? So that's perfect, mate. 
Yeah, just just to want to turn it into a business. The Patreon thing is a really good thing. I'd suggest for any musicians to go and check that out. A chance for you to build your own community. I wouldn't look at it as a massive revenue source, more as, as a time a time to build bring people together into the right space. I very yeah. found that that most most other platforms at the moment have become saturated, and because of that, people aren't logging in and engaging into streams the way they should. They're not like sitting down and saying, "Hey, he's doing a show. I'm going to stay for the longevity of it." Whereas if you do that in Patreon, you can pull the people together, you can announce your times, you can schedule things and you can make sure that you're getting a nice community and building it and, and, and then they'll be with you for the journey, which is what I'm trying to do next. Superb. Absolutely superb, mate. Um, well, normally at this point, coming up towards the end of the interview, I, know I ask artists, you know, is there anybody you'd like to thank for you being here musically now? Oh, there's, there's loads, really. I've had a lot of help along the way. Most of my friends, that you know, the ones that have let me stay at different times, crashing on couches or spare rooms. Um, I, I had two business investors um, from, from Belfast help me for a, f a good few years, trying to help me to get somewhere. Both uh, both really nice gentlemen. And one of them passed away this year and, and his family. I, I just passed my condolences to Robert and the family, Robert Foster's family. They, they were great guys. Jim Rice over there, absolutely been a rock my whole life. Recently, the guy in, in, in Cornwall there, in Paul Flevin at Trequian Farm is Tom Bracegirdle. He's an absolute character. If you go in the ship pub, you'll know him, but he's been really good in helping me to start having a mind of being business-like and helping me to structure my life. Right. And him, right. and his, him and his family have been great. So yeah, everyone that's been part of the journey, the guys over in Houston, uh, <laughs> I could go on for a very long time. Yeah. I, I, think, I think to survive as long as 20 years in without taking a real job along the way has only been possible through the help of my friends. Fantastic. Uh, and the people yeah. I've met. So it's good to know that when you put it out there and you give what you've got for the good of the people, that the people do come back there for you. That's the way I found it. Superb. Johnny, it's been brilliant talking to you, mate. Absolutely superb. And I can't wait for, obviously, come out of this lockdown and, you know, go to one of your gigs. It'll be absolutely Oh, we love brilliant. it. I'll catch you up in person. It'll be brilliant. I, we, we, yeah. we, we, what we will be doing, I'll, I'll invite you to it as well. It's next year. Once the Patreon launches, I'm going to do a year, yearly party. So at the end of each year, get everybody to come together and we'll do a show uh, somewhere in, 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 uh, in, in Port Flebin there. Lovely, and get everyone. Mate. So that, that'll be a crack. Well, thank you so much for your time, mate. It's been absolutely brilliant talking to you. Thank you for having me on. All the very best. All and right, you take care, mate. Doing it. Cheers. Nice one. Cheers. See you, Craig. Thank you.